Peptides are known as short-chain amino acid linked by peptide bonds. Peptides are the molecule which transfer information between the cells and inside the cells. So peptides stimulate the cell's integrity. Also, peptides are big molecules and cells use it to build new cells. So peptides help stem cells to create new cells. Being administered to the human body or any other living entity, long-chain peptide breaks down to short-chain peptides and amino acid, serving as a building materials for the cells and performing the role of bioregulators for cell functioning, the so-called biopeptides. One of the crucial points about the biopeptides is their ability to travel from the cell plasma exterior to the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, the peptides interact with DNA and regulate the expressions of genes, which then create a host of other substances that regulate metabolism. These regulations of the DNA happen epigenetically, in other words, indirectly influencing the cell gene expression, modulating their effects that can be heritable and reversible, and thereby helping on the adaption. During this process, microRNA are involved. The process of aging changes the way genes produce regulatory peptides. This means the regulation of metabolism becomes unbalanced. This dysregulation may result in worsening inflammation, a process that has been implicated in many age-related conditions. Or it may result in the lost ability to control the growth of cells, which means the cells will go, grow uncontrollably, resulting in cancer. However, the additions of bioactive peptides may help to rectify some of this dysfunction. Any short change peptides can home in and identify the specific young or old or impaired tissues and cells. This is significant because it means the action of any given peptides can be studied and extrapolated in advance, knowing that it will have clear and specific effects. Gunther Brobel, American-German scientist, Nobel Prize winner in Physiology of Medicine, 1999, was awarded for his discovery that protein has intrinsic signals that govern their transport and localization in the cells, cell signaling. Housted in 1909 has molded the idea of homing principle. Plant placenta, also known as vegetal placenta, is a scientific substitute for human or animal placenta as it offers almost the same efficacy and result. It is found at the heart of young plants under the pistil which nourishes the fruit during its growth and possesses an extraordinary regenerating power along with other benefits good for health and body. Besides that, vegetal placenta is being extracted from the non-GMO soy buds and the soy is unique in that it contains a high concentration of isoflavones, a type of plant estrogen, phytoestrogen, that is similar in function to human estrogen but with a much weaker effect. Soy isoflavones can bind to estrogen receptors in the body and cause either weak estrogenic or anti-estrogenic activity. So that vegetal placenta can be widely used for improving hormonal imbalances, metabolism, postmenopausal symptoms elevating. It helps to protect bone health, reducing risk of osteoporosis and lower the risk of cardiovascular disease development in women with age-related and non-age-related estrogen deficiencies. Plant-based placenta products may be considered as a complementary treatment to a conventional therapy and as a solo therapy prescribed within an extended period of time. On soft gels in terms of the potency of metabolism, animal placenta products, if from SPF sources, and freeze-dried are more potent. Vegetal is less potent at the beginning. MC with fish DNA is another alternative. Source and methodology matters. Fetal target organ-specific cells will always work better with the placenta working hand-in-hand -hand to give stimulation.
There is a known publication in the International Journals of Oral and Dental Health on the effective treatments of patients with peri-implantitis using the human-derived placenta tissues in the form of amnium chorion strips. Treatments of this is one of the challenging procedures in implant dentistry in which bone reintegrations to the infected implant surface is unpredictable. Placenta tissue has been introduced in medicine for the treatments of burns and optomic disease around the turn of the century. In dentistry, the placenta-derived tissue with its abundance growth factors has demonstrated a promising and effective role in the treatments of soft and hard tissue deficiencies within the oral cavity. Thus, placenta-based product, whether it sells tissue peptides or extract, can be widely used for the treatment of any dental pathology that requires promotion and enhancement of the healing and regenerative processes. And once dental implant disease is an example of a successful placenta-derived application, the NOP and MOs of Jinjaiwa and bones comes in handy. The rationale behind it lies in the hypothesis that the unique inherent biological properties of placenta enhance wound healing and may even propagate regeneration. In conclusion, Jinjaiwa diseases, parodontitis, parodontosis, and other regenerative dental diseases could be treated well by MO and NOP of the placenta together with the other types, example bone for bone mass, grafting and gingiva for gum disease and prevention. Fresh and pure hydrolyzed placenta HP is used in intramuscular injection 2 or 4 ml 2 times a week within 2 months. MO placenta may be administered as a solo treatment 2.5 ml 2 to 3 times per week over 3 to 4 months or in combination with other organ-specific peptides. The protocol depends on the type of disease, its stages, severity and specificity as well as the contraindication presence. MO will work better than HP as he has a higher concentration of a newer technology and are stem cell peptides. There are a few known cases of successful treatments outcome within our European Wellness Centre in women, including even with dog breeders in other parts of the world with different dosages with endocrine hormonal and senescence infertility caused by premature menopause due to premature ovarian failure. The patients receive combinations of stem cell treatment and or peptide therapies including the placenta peptides. For infertility, apart from the usage of placenta, one also needs the pituitary, adrenal cortex, gonads, the ovary of the testes, and the liver for the hormones to metabolize better. Based on the extensive European experience of cellular therapy application in the treatment of endocrine disorder, we have elaborated the idea of preventions and reversals of hormonal changes occurring in premature menopause by direct stimulations of gonadal activities and organ productions by organ-specific peptide therapies. Among other possible applications for placenta products in women with infertility, the following pathologies should be considered. Premature ovarian failures, luteal phase deficiencies, recurrent pregnancy loss, Asherman syndrome, andrometriopathy, chronic pelvic inflammatory diseases, pelvic excessive diseases, unexplained infertility. There are some publications of Russian researchers where they describe a successful treatment outcome and much of the improvement in women with the thin endometrium due to the chronic endometrial inflammations and impaired hormonal receptor sensitivity and repeated IVF failures. Placenta extracts since the time where they are discovered by Filatov in 1940s are being widely used by gynecologists from countries of the post-Soviet Union as a potent biogenic stimulant or the so-called 
tissue biostimulants to reduce inflammation, promote healing and function regeneration of organs in women with pelvic inflammatory diseases, PID. Being administered in the subacute phase of disease and convalescence period. Cancer and any types of tumors are strict contraindication for placenta therapy in our practice. After surgery or any other treatment, it's recommended only after two years when an oncologist says that this patient is totally free from cancer. Patient can opt for so many other formulation post-cancer-free situations from female or male revitalization programs, for example. For cancer patients, many European doctors to treat with thymus and spleen therapies with super transfer factors and GCBF of ours. There are many publications of thymus or cancer, but in all oncological cases, it has to be a series of modality of treatments and variations in the methodology on a case-to-case. -case. In conclusion, since placenta itself possesses high potent stimulating effect on the self-growth and proliferation, along with its pro-hormonal activity, it is contraindicated in patients with the evidence and history of cancer disease, especially with the known presence of hormone-dependent and hormone-producing tumors. Cancer itself is a disease of hormones. When it comes to gynecological application and the patient presents with endometrial polyps or multiple polyps which is named polyposis, which is meant to be removed while hysteroscopic resertion or surgical curettage first because it appears to be a benign tumour and usually occurs as a result of an excessive endometrial proliferation which in turn is caused by increased level of estrogen in the blood or by the estrogen dominance due to lack of progesterone or its decreased receptor sensitivity as well as its increased receptor sensitivity to estrogen or the impaired elimination. In any case, we dealt with the hormonal hyperfunctions and hormonal excess. So the administration of placenta product is strongly discouraged, again due to a well-known pro-hormonal activity. Though it may be considered after some time where the cause leading to hormonal excess is eliminated, the hormones are tuned and the perspective of recurrent endometrial polyps is totally excluded. As for the cysts present in women who are prescribed with placenta therapy due to some determined indicated condition, so it should be clearly detected first what kind of cyst your patient has. In the case of endometria, which are meant to be surgically removed, placenta therapy is totally contraindicated. But again, as in the case of endometrial polyps, it may be considered in the long run. Vegetal placenta may be considered as safer for patients with unrecognized cancer or precancerous condition as it possesses much weaker pro-hormonal and proliferic activity, especially when it comes to hormonal dependent and hormonal producing tumors. Though it still promotes healing and regeneration, anti-inflammatory effects alongside with the immune modulation and restorative effects. Uterine fibroids and endometriosis, same as endometrial polyps, are the female condition caused largely by hyperestrogenic states, whether it's the result of elevated estrogen level or abnormal sex hormones ratios. So the administration of placenta products should be discouraged in these patients. Yes, it may be relevant in the case of total cancer removal and total assurance or evidence of tumor relapse absence as well as its metatastic foci. So it should always be considered a health risk benefit ratio. 
Thank you so much to MMJ, all for one and one for all. Arigato gozaimasu.